Have you ever wondered what lurks in your backyard? Well, today you're gonna get the chance to see some of the creatures that could be found in a Texas backyard. We'll start with these rocks over here. They're in a nice protected area under the trees. There's plenty of vegetation. And these are those flat, weird rocks that aren't actually rocks, but they're flat. And so they cause a bunch of crevices and things. As you can see, we already have a ton of creatures all over the place. We've got pill bugs. This guy's going for it. He's being beat by George over here. This is a super common species of creature. No, that's not how you do it. Donnie with his professional pill bug handling skills. Oh, you lost him. Nope. Gotcha. The man is a pro. These guys are super common to most places, but especially here in South Central Texas. They're actually not a bug or an insect. They're actually a crustacean. So they're actually more closely related to shrimp and crabs and lobsters and things, which is pretty cool. They're not an insect or an arachnid, which is interesting. We have a whole bunch of little crustaceans roaming around. But they're very common and harmless. They actually have a pretty cool defense mechanism of they will roll into a ball when they get freaked out. You can see that. Rolled right up into a ball. Now, of course, he's going to poke back out because nothing's messing with him. But they're sort of exoskeleton is actually plated and hinged in a way that allows them to roll into a perfect ball. It does protect them pretty efficiently from ants, spiders, and uh, most of the things that'll eat them. Scorpions we can still get to them because they can pry them up. What is that? Oh, that's a pill bug. But, pretty cool little bug. Over here, haven't even moved anything yet. We got another resident of the Texas backyard. This here is a snail. And I don't exactly know what kind of snail this is. It's one of those ones with the long spirals, uh, spiral shell that people with gardens do not like. These guys are herbivores. These guys are roaming around, probably grazing on all of this vegetation. They don't have to be as wary as slugs do to the fact that they have a decently strong shell that protects them from most predators. That's another resident. So far we have two different species that we found we haven't even moved a rock yet, so let's go ahead. Let's flip this one first, because it's kind of right here on the edge. Got a colony of fire ants. Now those guys are pretty nasty. These guys are actually not native to Texas or anywhere in America. They're actually only native to Brazil. They came over in cargo ships and things a long time ago, and now you're never going to get rid of them, but they don't belong here. And let me tell you, anybody that steps, has stepped in a fire ant nest, which is pretty much everyone, We'll tell you they don't belong here, and that's for sure. So we're also gonna check under this, which is a floor mat. I know it stays pretty dry, so you never could tell what could be under here. First and things that's first. A, that's a huge but I have a cricket. spider. The two crickets. There's one cricket right here. I have another cricket yeah, right there. Really massive. Those guys are pretty common around here. Santa? Another cricket. A whole colony of crickets down here. Centipede! Where? Right there. Oh, sure enough. Oh, boy. No, it's a little bitty baby one. You can just here. barely see that tiny little centipede there. A tiny... There's something that's eating pill bugs Tiny in little baby centipede right there. Those guys actually can give you a pretty nasty bite, so if you see a bigger one, you want to be careful. You don't want to mess around with those. Oh. Definitely more things under this because you can see compared to how wet the outside ground is. It just goes to real dry under here and the bugs like to stay out of the wet. So let's give them back their roof. I'll put that back and move on to the next spot. So our next spot is gonna be this board right here. I'm just gonna flip this over and we're gonna see what lurks. We have tons and tons and tons of pill bugs and a chicken. It's hard to not find pill So bugs. that's great. Here we have something pretty interesting. You can see down inside those, all of those grubs. And I guess this was inside of, up underneath something, one of the dogs knocked it down. But you can actually see there are seven, eight, nine, ten, ten or eleven baby wasps, wasp larvae down inside that. 
kind of interesting. That's something you don't see every day. But that is just a red wasp nest. They're a paper wasp, so they make this real papery material, and, and they guard it ferociously. You ever messed? You ever accidentally bumped into anything with a red wasp or any wasp nest, any wasp nest in it? You know that they are not fun to mess with when you see them. But that's kind of interesting. That's what their larvae look like. So onto this rock, we have a few interesting things. We have a couple earwigs. They do not climb into your ears at night. That was what actually got them their name. People used to believe that they would climb in and lay eggs in your ears during the night. Yeah, kind of weird. But that's actually not true. You can see a couple of them there. They are completely harmless, although they are weird. You can see, despite those rather scary looking pinchers on the back. They actually don't use those to pinch. They actually use those to flare up their tail. They'll curve their tail and actually look like a scorpion if they get mad enough. I don't think he's gonna demonstrate for us. They will actually use their those pinchers, move their eggs around when they're nesting. So that's kinda cool. There was a few more little itty bitty centipedes under here. Don't know, they must have cleared off somewhere, which is fine by me. That's a species of bugs I don't particularly like. Interestingly enough, right here, they actually have some tiny, tiny, tiny baby earwigs. Probably the eggs of that earwig there, because I remember there was a nest here. But tiny little baby earwigs, so that's pretty interesting. And more pill bugs. And a chicken. You always want to check up under overhangs and things. That's where the wasps like to be. Now that is actually a species of millipede that is pretending to look like a centipede with those bright colors. Now, you can tell it's a millipede, A, because it's curled into a ball. Centipedes do not curl into balls. Wait. It also has a round, it's got a round body instead of a flat body, and it doesn't really have a set of pinches. But mostly that round body tells you that's a millipede as well as the fact that it's curled up. It could well be poisonous. Uh, some millipedes are. Uh, but that's really if you eat it or were to touch it too much with your hands, it could secrete a little bit of poison. I don't believe millipedes here do that, but the bright colors in the insect world are almost always a warning. But it's definitely trying to mimic a centipede, but that almost flat shape, but it's still round enough to be a millipede. And the fact that it's curled into a ball tells me it's a millipede, but a little bit of mimicry going on, so things try to leave it alone because centipedes obviously they can inflict a pretty nasty bite. So that kind of warns predators to stay away, even though this guy's most likely harmless. Kind of cool. So there you go, that was a quick look at what types of insects and arachnids and creatures, sometimes crustaceans, as we saw, can lurk in a Texas backyard. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you guys next time.